All right, welcome back everyone to our channel. This is Plant-Based Kidney Health. If you're looking for the carnivore challenge, this is not the right channel, sorry. So today's question, uh, Michelle, I think is gonna be an interesting topic, which is really around whey protein versus plant-based protein. So why don't we start off with the basics? What the heck is whey protein? How does it compare to some of the other types of proteins like plant-based varieties like soy, pea, or others? Yeah, so I mean, whey protein is a type of protein derived from whey. That's the liquid that's remaining um, after milk has been you know, curdled and strained. It's a complete protein. It has all the essential amino acids. Um, it's commonly used because it's high in protein and it's rapidly absorbed by the body. Um, whey is obviously an animal source of protein. It contains lactose. If someone had a milk allergy or lactose intolerance, um, then they likely wouldn't be consuming whey. Um, soy protein, and then even we'll get into pea protein, but soy protein is also a complete protein, but from a plant source, it's also high in protein. Um, you know, kind of thinking of soy compared to whey, they, you know, both are complete proteins, but have a different amino acid profile. So soy protein can be, you know, it's usually higher in arginine and glutamine, but it's lower in methionine and cysteine. So, um, you know, just an example of the difference there, but soy protein isn't absorbed as quickly as whey, but it's generally digested well and still absorbed well. And then same thing with pea protein. Um, pea protein isolate is made from yellow split peas. It's another plant protein option, high protein, complete protein, slightly different amino acid profile. Um, and obviously if someone had like a soy allergy or a milk allergy, then a pea protein is an option. And overall, I think when we're talking about these and we're thinking of these different types of proteins in supplement form, um, you know, they're all concentrated protein isolates or concentrated protein uh, or protein concentrates, and they're going to be high in protein and they're going to meet higher protein needs for people that have higher protein needs. And usually in the kidney disease world, we're talking about people on dialysis that have higher protein needs, um, people with kidney disease in earlier stages, especially three to five that are not on dialysis usually have lower protein needs and consuming these very concentrated high protein supplements can put people way over on their protein needs. So let's dive a little bit more in the research then. Um, what does the research say about whey protein for people, you know, on dialysis with higher protein needs? Are plant proteins better, the same, worse? What's the verdict on that? Okay. So once again, not an easy question to answer because we don't have a lot of direct comparisons, but let's take a step back. So there's a study by Darcy et al. It says 264 patients, ESRD, cross-sectional study. So they're basically looking at a moment in time. And these were all essentially 73% of them were men. So it doesn't necessarily mean it would apply to everybody. And the average age was about 58. Now that background is important so you understand why we're talking about the study. Now what they found in this particular case, that after they were adjusting for all the usual confounders that happen, they found that when it comes to quality of life, total protein intake and plant-based protein intake reached statistical significance. In other words, both the total protein, which was a combination of plant and animal, was positive for improving quality of life, and just plant was positive for improving quality of life. But when they looked at animal protein specifically, there wasn't a significant interaction. So before everybody runs out and says, oh my God, you know, plant versus animal, it proves that plant is the greatest thing ever. Well, no, not really. But what you want to understand from this study from a quality of life perspective is a few things. First is what we know is when we start to take a step back and start to look at plant-based diets and getting more protein from plant-based sources, other studies have shown that there's a lower risk of cardiovascular disease. And that's important because the number one killer of dialysis patients is heart disease, right? It's not kidney disease. It's actually heart attacks and death. The other part of this is, is when we start to talk about plant-based proteins in the form of getting more plant-based foods, you have diets that are rich in polyphenols, you have diets that are rich in fiber, and the reason that matters is that together lowers the total inflammatory markers inside the body. It also lowers things like LDL, so your cholesterol is going down, and what we know once again is the number one killer is heart disease, heart disease, heart disease. Underlying it is inflammation, inflammation, inflammation. So when we talk about these things, the reason it matters is 
you know, as Michelle was alluding to the profile of amino acid differences, plant-based proteins have higher levels of threonine and histidine amino acids. And the reason, so just because it's a higher amino acid is useless. The question is, so what? Well, the reason of the so what is because histidine and threonine are linked to better blood pressure control. The more you have in the body, the better you're going to be as far as blood pressure control. Now, if you flip that around and you go to whey protein, and let's say you're not just talking the whey isolate, you're talking about getting it from food. We've already talked about multiple times that more red and processed meats are in are linked essentially with, first, they have higher saturated fatty acids, but second, they have higher amounts of inflammatory markers that end up occurring in the body. And so this matters because not only are the inflammatory markers higher, but you'll find that the specific amino acid concentrations like alanine, methionine that are in there, what the data shows is if you're getting a lot of alanine, methionine, your blood pressure can go higher. So when you start to look at all of these as a whole, whey versus plant-based, a simple question comes to mind is plant-based is going to give you an overall reduction in your total daily dietary acid load versus animal protein, whey included, is going to give you the opposite of that. And the goal here in dialysis patient is the environment is already very inflammatory, reducing the acid burden makes a difference. And that's why it matters. And then the last part of this is when you start to talk about what are the biggest problems in dialysis patients? Well, it turns out the biggest problems are depression and sleep. And one of the things that every single nephrologist, every dietitian, every social worker, every healthcare worker out there who deals with dialysis patients does not, and myself included, does not do enough of a job is to deal with the mental aspect, the really significant depression that these patients are going and they're suffering in silence. And so the fact that plant-based proteins end up having a little bit of a better impact on mental health, meaning depression, meaning sleep, that makes it even better for us to be pushing more plant-based proteins. And then that's not all, there's more. Then what happens is we've talked about the gut and how crazy the bacteria in the gut is. So what happens is uremic toxins come from gut bacteria. So if you want to lower those, plant-based proteins will end up lowering that because you get less um, of the toxins being formed, but you also start to change the bacteria that's there. So that helps. And the last part of this is, is that with plant-based proteins, because with uremia and so forth, your appetite is shot. So a lot of these patients can actually have, some of them have extra weight, but nutritionally, they're malnourished. It's a dichotomy there where even though they may have weight, or others are actually losing too much weight than we like because they have no appetite. And so plant-based proteins can actually help by changing the gut and improving the appetite, which can reduce the risk of malnutrition, ultimately improve the quality of life. That's a long-winded answer. So there you have it. So Michelle, when it comes to then changing. And I hope, you know, that was a convincing enough argument for why plant-based proteins are favored. But if someone is choosing a whey or plant-based protein supplement, what are the things that they ought to look in it? Okay. So of course there's a lot of junk added to protein supplements um, to make it look more appealing, to make it taste good, to add other nutrients in it, to try to make it more of like a meal replacement or weight loss thing. Um, really the most ideal thing is to, I mean, whether it's whey or plant-based is to get something that's unflavored. That's just the protein concentrate or the protein isolate. Um, so like you looked at the label and it's like pea protein isolate, that's it, right? Soy protein isolate or whey protein isolate concentrate. That's it. Um, these typically have zero grams of added sugar. They don't have artificial sweeteners. They don't have sugar alcohol. So you wouldn't take that mix it with water and drink it most likely because it's not going to taste very good. Um, if using these types of things that don't have other stuff added, you're really just getting that protein and those amino acids from it. Then you would mix it in a smoothie and oatmeal, yogurt, something that you're getting flavor elsewhere. Um, but if you are choosing something that does have some flavor, then I would look for minimal added sugar. You know, something that's like four grams added sugar or less per serving. Um, you know, there's 
fruity pebbles, cereal flavored protein powders out there. And I think the thing is, it's like, that's not the goal is to get something that's like sweet and sugary tasting and then, you know, chug it because it gives you more protein. It's we, we want to be including it in a diet that is providing you with these other nutrients. And that's more alkaline producing like Dr. Hashmi mentioned, because that's, what's going to help overall with inflammation and acid load. Um, other things to look at, I mean, ideally no artificial sweeteners like aspartame, sucralose, no phosphorus additives, um, you have to be mindful of the sodium content of a lot of protein supplements. Some can be 400, 500 milligrams per serving, and some might be 100 to 200. Um, other things I would say that you want to look at is um, you can be careful with is if they have like green powders or like what other vitamins and minerals are added to it or what like proprietary blends. A lot of times they're like 10 servings of fruits and veggies and it's these powders. And a lot of times those can be very concentrated amounts of potassium or oxalates or other things that someone might need to be mindful of. And we just don't, we simply don't know exactly how much potassium is, is in those proprietary blends. So um, that's what I would look for if you're looking for a supplement. And again, going as um, less things added, and then that way you have control in your diet, you're making oatmeal and you put a scoop of your, you know, pea protein powder in it and you have your berries and cinnamon and all this stuff. That's going to be a lot better option than drinking a shake that tastes like fruity pebbles. So we hope that answers your guys' question on whey and soy and other plant protein supplements for dialysis. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.